It is extraordinary to find a merchant biography for the 17th century, let alone an Armenian merchant's biography. Um, a man by the name of Markaravanchins came from a major family in India, but they were initially based in New Jalfa. He and his seven brothers were in the gem trade, which involved the diamond trade, but also precious stones, garnets. And this was a major trade for the Armenians. In 1664, Jean-Baptiste Colbert, who is the Minister of Finance of Louis XIV, decides to create a French East India Company. This is decades after the English and the Dutch, and they absolutely want to compete with the English and the Dutch in the Indian trade. He chooses two people as the director of this new company. One of them is a Dutchman named François Caron, who's changed his name and turned to Catholicism. He is an expert on Asian trade. The other is Marcara Avanchins. Marcara Avanchins is given the title of director of all of the French counters in Persia and India. These two men, together with supervising directors, sail to India on a ship named La Couronne with the hope of opening India to French trade. The reason that Jean-Baptiste Colbert hired a Dutchman and an Armenian is that these were the two major networks in Asian trade. And he knew that Marcara Avanchins was very well placed in the Indian trade. And he knew of the knowledge that the Armenians had. It is Marcara Avanchins who basically gets the first firman from the king of Golconda in 1669. He does this through his own relationship he actually knows the nephew of the king. He obtains a wonderful firman. The Dutch and the English never had anything like it. The French are exempt of all duties for trading in India. Shortly after this success, his co-director, Caron, accuses him of embezzlement and of being more loyal to the Armenian network than to the French and does everything to get him into trouble. Makara had Rajput guards, and he knew about the accusations. And he was extremely careful, and he was very well regarded in Patam, where most of the merchant population knew him while they didn't know the French. So it was very, very difficult to do anything to him. The French went to kidnap him during a baptism, and they captured him, two of his nephews, and his son. Seeing that there's trouble and that he has a lot of support in India, and they have none, they decide to imprison him in the hold of a ship. For 32 months, the ship went around the world, including to Brazil. Eventually, the ship lands in France, and he's imprisoned in terrible conditions, and he would have been all but forgotten had his cousin not come from Bengal, also in the jewel trade, and that shows the Armenian family system. And the cousin manages to open the door to Versailles. He goes straight to Louis XIV. You wonder why a merchant from Bengal can open the doors to Versailles. Louis had the biggest diamond collection of the whole of Europe. It was given to him by Jean-Baptiste Tavernier. Jean-Baptiste Tavernier worked with the Armenians. His sources were Armenian. So Louis loved his diamond collection and knew of the merchants. So he intervenes and gets Marcara out of prison, at which point Marcara sues the French East India Company. There's going to be two lawsuits, and he wins against the French East India Company. So his story is in the French archives at the Bibliothèque Nationale. It's a fascinating story that gives an example of that network and of the collaboration of that network with other people, but also family collaboration and family solidarity.
and yes, it proves the importance of the Armenian world trade that sort of an East India company of a major European country hires someone to direct their trade and gives them the title of director of all the counters in Persia and India. It was because of his connections, because of the fact that he was part of the new Jalfa trade world and that was a big world and a very successful world.